Hello and welcome to this podcast by White Swan Foundation. Through interviews and interactions, we bring you a range of perspectives on mental health and well-being that you will identify with. This is Manoj Chandran from White Swan Foundation. Our guest today is Jayashri Kalatil, who I had the opportunity to meet at the Intar 2016 conference which was organized by Pune-based Papu Trust and the International Network Toward Alternatives and Recovery. Jayashri is the founder of London-based Survivor Research. Involved in the mental health advocacy for the last two decades, Jashree has played a wide array of roles to represent the plight of those suffering from psychosocial disabilities. I spoke with Jashree on the role communities can play in helping people with psychosocial disabilities lead better quality of life. Jashree, welcome to this podcast. Thank you. Could you elaborate on the importance of creating an inclusive community for those with psychosocial disabilities? A community is the space where everyone coexists so that includes people who have psychosocial disabilities if those people are not include those sort of people who have um, psychosocial disabilities are not part of the community then the community is not complete that's sort of essential uh, but communities are complex places it's not a cohesive place it is a it is a place it is a it's a space where there's lots of confrontations hierarchies power structures whether it is in terms of gender whether it is in terms of caste and also based on the idea of who is normal who is sane and who is not normal who is insane so creating a community where these hierarchies exist less and less and less that is the je- basic meaning of community inclusion where everybody has a chance everybody has a role and everybody coexists so i mean for me that is the crux of the matter but we have communities where we we sort of fear or we do not understand why people are not conforming to our idea of what normal is and so then we uh, we the tendency then is to isolate them whether it is isolating them within our homes whether, whether it is isolating them within institutions of psychiatric care we do not work together with them they don't become part of the community structure so inclusion then means breaking down these hierarchies and essentially our own understanding of who is deemed normal and what is normal in society because those also shift across histories what has been normal has shifted across histories so our understanding of what we currently feel are problems of living can also shift in the community inclusion model what does recovery truly mean for me recovery means recovering a life so what happens when somebody has a distress experience is that maybe because we don't know how to deal with that distress maybe because we have certain ways of dealing with that distress that then makes it an illness or an abnormality we tend to isolate people so recovery for me is not just treating the symptoms or you know for example if there is someone who hears voices my idea of recovery is not to make that person stop hearing voices what i would mean by recovery is that that person is able to live a life with where hearing voice is part of that person's life so you know it's a human experience how we um, kind of define them and how we kind of uh, isolate them is the problem so recovery for me is about being able to live a life according to what you like what you want uh, being able to make decisions for oneself being able to participate in all the things that other people in the community are living so basically to me it means being a full citizen of that community what are the basic re- ingredients towards creating an inclusive society or inclusive community for people with psychosocial disabilities for me the most basic ingredient is equality now that is also the most difficult uh, ingredient to achieve because we have all kinds of hierarchies whether it is of you know men are um better than women or whether it is of caste whether it is of what we think sexual relationships and sexuality should be so how do we achieve equality that is the most important um, ingredient but if we then have equality then we have all sorts of other main ingredients that we have such as the rights that people are allowed to have in communities equal access to resources equal access to education equal access to just participate 
in creating what is our own space as well as other people's space so it's that sharing and for that sharing to happen the most important thing is that these power structures and these hierarchies are broken down do you see inclusive community an alternative to or a complementary uh, environment to the treatment process or alternate treatment processes that are available um for that i think we need to kind of think about what we mean by treatment so currently the way in which somebody who has a distress experience can access support even i mean even that is quite restricted is by you have a distress experience you go to a medical professional and you get treated and most of the time the treatment is medication and nothing else so if you mean treatment in that sense then i don't think it's a question of whether community inclusion is a complementary or alternative I, i just don't think that that particular model works all right so community inclusion model looks at distress slightly differently that doesn't in, you know it doesn't completely do away with the need for medication or, i mean that's not my personal opinion i'm just accepting that it may be the situation where um people may not completely do away with the uh, need for treatment that means medication yes community inclusion means that it has to have various other ways in which this person can recover their life now that means access to how the basic needs of life like housing family education employment etc etc also being able to live a life of dignity being able to participate fully as a person being able to have um, equality with everybody else in the community a lot of the time you will see that distress is the re- com- direct result of social problems whether that is of abuse violence trauma poverty etc etc so in that situation just giving somebody medication is never going to solve the causes of that distress so for me i don't think the question is about community inclusion being alternative or complementary i think if at all treatment should be if absolutely necessary part of the model of community inclusion not the other way around how do we convince the members of the community that they need to become participative in the creation of an inclusive community i think members of a community are already participating in inclusion it's just the levels of participation and what they think inclusion is that we need to work with because communities are organic places but communities are also places which have very clear definitions and hierarchies in operation so for example if you take a community like a district in kerala you will find that there are different communities coexisting but there are also tensions between these different communities but in each of those communities members are participating they are participating both in the inclusion and in the exclusion of individuals the question is about how do we change that situation of people participating in exclusion and then continuing with how people participate in inclusion and that's where issues like human rights and equality etc come in jashri kalatil thank you so much for talking to white swan foundation thank you